So first of all, I'm Ekan. Uh, I'm neurosurgeon, but now I almost jobless because of COVID-19 case drop. Then that's why I become a presenter now. Mm -hmm. So I apologize. I'm not a provisional presenter. So that's why I caught. I am a provocator yeah. because yeah. I have no. <laughs> I have no talent yet. Sorry for that. Yeah, I'm not professional. Okay. Uh, all participants, uh, why we make this uh, talk show? Because you know that many of our classic students, our class, they stay home. They are a lot of frustration. They are depression. What they are doing, really, really big, big problem. That's why we need to share. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here on behalf of Indonesia Medical Education Association. So I'm blessed by Professor Hudu, president of IP, then I'm here. And thank you also for Berita Satu for assisting all of the IT because I don't understand IT at all. So I just prepare this presentation. So before we go to the opening from president of IP, so I would like to share one minute what we are doing here. So here is my colleague, uh, Dr. Titis. He is a pulmonologist and she is lecturer in our medical school. She just want to show you one minute using a telestatoscope. Yeah. A wireless stethoscope. How can she educate student from here and student at home? Yeah. Okay. So that it is one minute. Yeah. So she is a very good at a lecture of us. Uh, So this is simulation patient, ya yeah? simulation patient. It's a wireless stethoscope. So she used just a phone and uh, want to listen the lung sound. Okay, one minute. Yeah, but I, I see you, Professor Yudi. Yeah, you see me, but I didn't see the presenter. <laughs> oh, okay. I okay. see you. Presenter itu kamera saya saya. Okay, one moment. Yeah, maybe combine with YouTube. So he is our medical student, yeah, you sing up. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for short, short uh, example. So we come back here, yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Titis. Uh, thank you very much, all. Dr. Andre, would you please sit down here? He is my vice dean and he will assist me as a timekeeper. Okay, so I would like to invite Professor Budu, President of Indonesia Medical Association, to give an opening. Please, Professor Budu, he is from Makassar, from three hours' flight from here. Please, Prof. Budu.
Thank you for Eka. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I am the president of uh, Indonesia Medical Education Association. Put um, our happy to our virtual meeting today. And you know, the COVID-19 pandemic made us um, cannot meet each other and also cannot um, uh, come to hospital really, like uh, every day before COVID-19 pandemic. And also even our student cannot uh, meet uh, the patient, cannot meet the hospital and also meet the teacher in the hospital. So this time, uh, we would like to share our experience uh, during COVID-19 pandemic, how to settle uh, up the PERSI program in hospital from uh, all of our institutions. So I would like to uh, uh, put my uh, great uh, thank you for all of our uh, outsiders speaker, our uh, distinguished excellency guests from Harvard University, Professor Mikhail Kacayino, from Oxford University, Sankarini, Mrs. Sankarini, and also from Stanford, Professor Budi Yuryawan, from Melbourne University, Professor Steve Chamber, from Imperial College of London, Professor Karim Miram, and from National University, uh, National University of Singapore, from Lao, and uh, from Gambia University, Professor Thomas Santarius, for uh, the time to come to our virtual meeting. And all of our colleagues from the dean around the Indonesian uh, area, from east to the west, for his time to come to share the experience, how to settle the clerkship program during the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, maybe for this moment also, uh, many lectures from uh, around Kahuki in Indonesia. Also, our also, uh, clerkship student join our meeting. So I would like to say, uh, please join us and uh, see how many institutions to set to the Kelsey program uh, in the uh, in And maybe that is all of my uh, speak for this moment. And I also uh, would like to thanks very much for uh, University of Pelita Harapan, yeah, Professor Ika, for uh, his uh, great effort to make this uh, virtual meeting, uh, special for uh, IT team from University of Pelita Harapan. Enjoy this meeting and we uh, begin this virtual, uh, we say uh, enjoy and make this meeting um, uh, friends and we know uh, discussion each other. But we just always uh, hear the experience from all of us. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Bruno. Thank you. Uh, so we will start with our intact international faculty first. Yeah. Uh, I am not the side of everyone, but I would like to invite Michael Catalino from uh, Brigham Hospital, Howard. Sorry, because Michael. Thank you very much. It's, this is a midnight in, in Boston, right? And you're going to sleep. So <laughs> you may talk first. That's very yeah. kind of Okay, me. so yeah. Michael, so sorry. Actually, I don't know personally about you. Just you know that you are very young, guys, energetic. Professor at law introduced me uh, to you that I met Professor Law when I giving a uh, visiting lecture in Harvard. So please, Michael, share your experience, what's happening in Brigham Hospital, Harvard, this time, what are you doing with the clerkship medical student? Please, Michael. Yeah, thank you, uh, Professor Eka. Uh, it's an honor to be uh, a part of this um, talk show. And so I want to just say thank you very much for the invitation from Dr. Laws and I. Um, so. Um, 
I will talk today about our experience at Harvard University and the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and what we've done with our clinical clerkships. Um, so as you all know, um, the COVID-19 pandemic has totally changed the way that we live our lives. Um, one of the main issues that we've experienced with this pandemic is that you can see from this chart here that any disease, any uh, communicable disease uh, that is highly fatal um, and uh, but asymptomatic can, can, can run the risk of um, the inability to control the outbreak. You can see here on the left side, it says the ability to contain the emerging virus in the absence of countermeasures. So as the, as the disease becomes more asymptomatic or has mild symptoms, it's more difficult to control. And this was published in the New England Journal in one of the um, uh, early publications in February. And we've seen that the, it's asympt very asymptomatic in a lot of people. And so it's difficult to contain the virus. And so that's why we need to have social distancing and remove our medical students from the hospital. Um, this is a picture of a patient with COVID-19 that, um, that I took care of actually in one of the ICUs. So I can tell you all that um, even as a, a neurosurgical fellow, um, we, are, we are redeployed to, and taking care of patients with COVID-19. Um, so what we started off with in March of 2020 was uh, the, we immediately pulled the students from all hospital-based rotations. Um, at that point, the preclinical uh, which our preclinical years are, are really just the first year. Um, the second year of medical school is what we call core clerkships. And then the third and fourth year are advanced clerkships. All preclinical courses went virtual. Uh, all the professors were able to convert their lectures to the virtual space. And then one week, um, it took about one week to convert all of the learning online. So there was a delay, um, but uh, we were able to accomplish that. The second thing, um, most clerkships were finishing um, anyways by the end of March. So the clerkship directors were asked to just provide any continuing education material. Um, the problem was this was last minute and a lot of clerkships didn't finish the way that we expected them to, especially in surgical clerkships where a lot of the experience is in person and in the operating room. This was almost impossible for this first March clerkship that was affected by the virus. Starting in April of 2020, we essentially shifted all, all of our elective courses uh, from the end of the year um, and the advanced clinical clerkships, which occur at the end of your fourth year, right before graduation, um, those, those clerkships were shifted to April so that they satisfy graduation requirements um, and they don't require in-person, in-hospital experience. So those clerkships for us are the essentials of the profession course, um, and also a number of elective courses on medical ethics, epidemiology, health policy, and so forth. All of these, all this teaching was strictly done through the virtual space. Uh, we use Zoom here, but other uh, virtual uh, softwares is, 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 is available. And then starting um, concurrently with that were these advanced integrated science courses. And these courses were offered um, per the, for the students. Two courses were available per month and um, for, the, for the month of April. And they include a deep dive into research advances in fields like microbiology, global health, neuroscience, so that the student as a, as a clinician 
can also be educated in the cutting edge work that's being done in the laboratory and in the public health sector. Uh, finally, um, these courses, as I mentioned, were all graduation requirements anyways. So we anticipate that we'll be able to uh, add the hospital-based clerkships to the end of the year um, and so make up for the lost time. Then starting in May, just now, we have uh, transitioned to a volunteer-based learning curriculum, which essentially assigns each student to a, uh, a different role. And that could be something such as handing out masks at the hospital, helping to screen patients for COVID-19, um, helping at shelters or local clinics that are in need of insist assistance. It could be calling patients, talking to patients on the phone, helping them with scheduling or insurance needs, advocacy and health policy, whether that's writing in a local magazine about health policy or advocating for our patients in other ways. And so their interaction with patients and healthcare is not absent, although the bedside teaching is compromised. And we've put together, uh, actually credit goes to the medical students for putting together a really fantastic online medical student curriculum that's being translated into over 20 languages and is going to be available, I think is currently available in English online. I provided that link to everybody um, in an email. So please take advantage of this. And the, 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 the curriculum goes through uh, multiple modules and this curriculum is what our students are using um, to- Michael, three minutes more, Michael. Yep. Um, the weaknesses of, of this approach obviously are the lack of bedside teaching there's no patient interaction and the observational skills and reasoning that uh, are, on, that are only require, uh, acquired through a case-based text. Now, what's the, the biggest issue here? I think we have to recognize what, the, um, what we're missing with online learning. Clinicians are natural Bayesians. This article from the British Medical Journal um, talks about the the, the clinician as a fundamental Bayesian. We, we acquire information, not just by what we read, but what we see, the physical examination, the diagnostic tests, and everything that we, we do. And, and, and the, the bedside evaluation of a patient is absolutely essential. And so what my final thoughts are in, uh, in addressing all of these uh, issues are that we have to find, we definitely have to find reliable online resources to bolster the medical education. It is very important to keep engaged with each other through uh, virtual, the virtual space, uh, engaged with professors, engaged with students, and en engaged with our friends and our families um, so we can maintain that human personal connection um, this will also help us with observational diagnostic skills. We can use imagination, visualization, meditation, surgical videos, clinical case pictures. Uh, I really love the, uh, the virtual or the, um, uh, virtual tel uh, 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 stethoscope. Um, I used to listen to my wife's heartbeat, um, you know, when, when, when I was in medical school. So, you can, as long as you have a, have a stethoscope, you could listen to your dog's heartbeat if, if, you, if you have a dog or you could, you know, you could do something of that nature, but you could, you could listen to pets, you could listen to your friends, your family, whoever you're around. Um, and it's important also at this time to spend time with our families, given the, the amount of people who are dying from this disease, you know, uh, especially our older uh, family members. Um, it is absolutely critical that we we, we spend time with them 
because um, they're most at risk uh, during this pandemic. Um, so the last thing I'll, I'll leave you with some resources. These are two websites. One, I've mentioned the curriculum of the COVID student response. The one above is, is called MedPix. It's a, a national library of medicine through the NIH. It's a uh, curriculum that's you based on images that have clinical case correlates. And there's over a thousand images that you can use from x-rays to pictures of a rash. Uh, and they're extremely helpful in developing a diagnostic uh, uh, interpolation of, of, of the material that we need going forward and that we're missing by not being at the bedside. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. So you may join, or if you are sleepy, you may go to the bedroom. Yes, me and in Boston right now. Oh, you're so, too kind. <laughs> thank you very much. I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue. Uh, okay, uh, dear friends, because many of medical students watching us, so maybe I would like to make our talk show becoming more millennial. So I would like to invite a young lady from Oxford University, uh, Sanskriti Sravanam, BA, BMBCH. So Sanskriti, you there? Hello? Sanskriti, you there? Hi, thank you very much. So again, I appreciate you. Do you know everybody that I just call her last 10 hours <laughs> to ask her <laughs> to, to present here and she agreed and support so highly appreciate. So Sasti, I, I know that you are very active in education and anatomy instruction. Please share with us what's happening in Oxford Medical School about mm -hmm. your clerkship or your final medical student. Please, Sanskriti. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for inviting me, Mr. Aker. Um, so in Oxford at the moment, all the clinical clerkships have stopped. Um, it's only the final years who've been helping out um, in a clinical setting. Um, all the final years have now graduated to become doctors. So we've been volunteering and getting jobs as foundation doctors, which we'd usually get at the start of August. So we're all in a clinical role at the moment. Um, as for the younger years, um, they've started volunteering um, for testing COVID um, asymptomatic and symptomatic patients. Um, they've been helping out with food delivery and pharmacy deliveries. Um, there's also a lot of teaching going on online. Um, from our professors to the students uh, once a week or two, three times a week, um, mainly based in surgery at the moment. Um, people, students have also been taking advantage of the vast amount of um, online resources that Oxford has provided us with um, and um, free online courses from Harvard, from Yale, um, learning about neuroanatomy and um, various other free courses that are available online. Um, and a vast majority of students have gone back to their research that they did previously. Um, they're writing up research reports and um, helping out in the labs at the moment. Um, and also with paperwork for various departments in the medical school or in the hospitals in general. Um, and a lot of them are also just rediscovering their old hobbies, be that painting, running, their um, other exercises and so on, um, and spending time with their families if they're um, around them. Thank you very much. Something else you want to share? Um, so I thought I would share some um, tips for uh, the medical students at the moment who've been stuck at home, uh, haven't been able to um, be in the hospital, how they can still further their medical education. Um, I think one of the best resources is um, the free online courses that are available, such as, as I said before, from Harvard, from Yale. Um, there are courses all over the internet that you can find and you can even get the certificate at the end. So I would highly recommend that. 
Um, I would also recommend helping out with research where possible. So contact um, research labs around your medical school or your university and ask if you could help out writing um, any papers or um, with any data interpretation. Um, it would be a really good um, thing to add on to your CV and also great experience in general. And finally, just keep uh, active, have a structure to your day. Um, it's very disorienting when you don't have um, classes or clerkships going on. So make sure you have a routine. Um, so a bit of work and a bit of relaxation as well. I know that you are coordinator of Anatomy Demonstrator. So would you share one minute? Can you uh, demonstrate anatomy online to your flagship student? Um, so we haven't been doing that um, here, but I know that there are lots of videos online um, with, with already anatomy being demonstrated. Um, here we use um, cadavers and um, prosected cadavers to teach students. Um, so that's my experience in anatomy at the moment um, in the University of Oxford. Um, we haven't been able to do that via um, video link, um, but I know there are loads of videos online that students could use. Thank you very much. So my best regard to Simon Cutlip. So I was giving lecture also in Oxford. Next time we will see again after Corona Globe. So friends, we will continue from Imperial College of London because Oxford and Imperial College of London, they are compete a lot in medical school, right? Okay, so Professor Karim Miran, MD, so I just know him also last three night. I got he is so keen to help, and I would like to thank you very much. So please share, Professor Karim. I know you are endocrinologist, and you are also the beauty director of medical education unit. That's very, very important role of you to manage a clerkship medical student. So I hope to see you next time. Please, Professor Miran. Okay, look, thank you very much for uh, for inviting me and um, to join your very interesting group. I found these talks so far very interesting. So so we have had the same problem that all of you have, and obviously we've moved to a lot of virtual things. Um, we have a six-year medical course. Uh, it's, it's quite a traditional course, so the first two years haven't had very much patient exposure, and in fact the first two years have weeks of patient exposure that has already happened. Um, exams have been a problem and we are testing out some software, in fact we've used it, where the students can do their whole exam on a device at home. Um, security obviously is a problem because we have used virtual exa online exams for some years where the exam is posted to the student's device, they run the exam and then the um, whole marking scheme goes back to a central computer and they're all marked immediately. So that works very well for multiple choice questions. We've tested it out with uh, very short answer questions where the answer might be one or two words. So for example, uh, if you ask the question, um, what, is the, what is the blood test you would do for a patient who has got pancreatitis? Instead of giving five options, you just leave a blank space and because the answer is one word, it can be typed in. And then the way we mark it, because marking 400 st students, we've set up a system whereby the students type in the words. So there's, there's maybe 100 questions and they have one or two word answers like that. So not multiple choice. And then after the exam is over, I can log in and I can see question one, uh, how many students have put each answer. So there's, it doesn't have a right answer or it does have some predefined right answers. But for example, I manually mark it very quickly because the system says uh, amylase, 175 students wrote this, and I can tick that, and that becomes a right answer immediately. And then maybe lipase is another correct answer, so I can accept that. And then there'll be some a small number of wrong answers, and there'll be a small number of misspelt correct answers that I can accept or reject. So we can mark a large number of short answer questions where the answers are one or two words very quickly. So that has, that has helped. 
because one of our big problems is going to be exams. You know, we can't use our big exam halls that we use traditionally. Um, then the clinical years, so um, we have moved to doing something very similar to that Michael mentioned earlier, which is uh, virtual sessions that we try to make interactive. So we use Teams or Zoom, whichever one the, the teacher prefers. Um, and we have medical, surgical, and primary care um, online sessions each week for year three. This is the this is the most worrying year. So they have done two terms already of normal, thank goodness, uh, exposure to patients, and to this final term, where we'd normally be they'd be getting ready for their exams. We have done a lot of online teaching and interactive cases. So, for example, um, there's a online thing called Capsule where all the students have cases and there's typical example cases of and there's a history and then this the line gives them on examination of what the patient has found for example consolidation features of cot so it'll say you know dullness of the left base um, bronchial breathing at left base now of course in those cases they read that and then they have some questions to answer and then at the end of the week when they've gone through all those by themselves the and that does drive a lot of self-directed learning which depends on the students being keen to do that then for example the medical ones i go through so i log in let's say on a friday at three o'clock and i go through the cases and the students very much like this have a group chat on the side where they ask me questions and i can unmute them just like this and they can um then ask questions of the whole year they're all in their homes and um they can ask questions we have um 300 students online um, and th that is very much like a live lecture but it's missing out the actual real patient experience and I'm really concerned I'm sure you are that what you learn on the wards is not medicine it's about the it's about the, the problems a patient has their anxieties they're not giving the correct history because um, of some other social problem and when the patients get to know the the the, sorry, the students get to know the patient by being on the ward for a few days. They, 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 this is hidden learning that is so valuable that we're missing. And that, that is our big concern. It's the picking up the nonverbal cues, but actually making a rapport. So for example, we're, we're not doing obviously any exposure of patients to um, obstetrics and gynecology. Um, but in that, it's not just learning about eclampsia and all the facts. It's about learning about the patient is in pain and how to try to help them. Those hidden bits of the curriculum where we need to think very hard about, and we have not succeeded in that. Um, the final term of year three, we are going to, I hope, rerun at the start of year five for this group of students because I feel that they need to have this exposure. So in the, because we have a one year BSc where they do science. So the year that I'm most concerned about is the first clinical year. They have done um, 24 weeks of clinical exposure, but they're missing, I think a crucial 10 weeks. So we're going to rerun this 10 weeks in the year and a half of this group when they have finished their science year. Um, um, year five, who've already done their full clinical clerkship in year three are currently going through things like obstetrics and those subjects, and they have been done them. And we've moved a bit like Michael was telling you what's doing at Harvard, our pathology course, which is the one that contains things like microbiology and histopathology to, to now. So they're running that online. And um, a lot of that is, is fact learning. Um, and it's not ideal, but it's, it's the best that we are doing in the circumstances. I don't know if I can take any other questions from anybody. Uh, I, your microphone is muted, I think. Hey. Hello, Karim. You listen? Hello. Yes. Okay. Uh, you finished? Yes, I have finished. Yeah, Thank you. I have one question. Uh, you say that you make an online exam. Mm -hmm. How do you secure uh, the online exam? somebody not probably decided whatever how mm -hmm. to be secure number two is could you also make like an exam for like a skill labs or mini cx or oski please one mm -hmm. minute answer 
Okay, so so we we use this exact technology normally for our OSCEs, where the examiners are on the device and uh, mark them. Um, so we haven't been able to do that because the patient and the students are not together. So an OSCE is a is a problem for us at the moment, and we have delay all these things until we hope we have lockdown release and a vaccine or something. So we are not, we have not been successful in doing that. The online exam does, um, there is a security problem, you're correct. So we have uh, used questions that are um, formative, if that makes sense, rather than summative exams, because you're right, we can't secure it. So we're having, we know it's open book. And so we say, we know that you might be exposed to other people, um, but the students want to, to, to practice using the technology. We will have a summative exam that is correct and proper when, we, when we're able to. There's a suggestion that we can bring the students into very large halls with the correct social distancing. They will have their devices, their own devices. They don't, they won't, they don't use our devices, they'll bring their own device and then we can push the exam out to their device and then pull it back in. Um, that's a plan for the future. Thank you very much. Very useful information. And I hope if uh, another provider gives a question to you, you don't mind to email you, yeah? My yes. best, my, 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 my best to get to Ramesh, he is uh, yes. in the same group with me in the World Society as uh, Anatomy Committee. My yes. best Okay, now we go to Thank Cambridge. You. Now we go to Cambridge. Uh, Mr. Thomas Santarius from Cambridge, he is a neurosurgeon and he is, I think, one of the most academic neurosurgeons. He is so keen and so nice helping us almost any time. And even he just recovered <laughs> from COVID and also his wife still unhealthy, but he's still willing to do education and helping us. I appreciate very much. Please, Tom from Cambridge University. Thank you very much, um, Professor Eka. It's a pleasure to be part of this meeting. Um, and it's probably the first time that I have been uh, connected to Jakarta virtually that I can say good morning. Um, and uh, it's, it's good morning for most of the panelists. Um, to, to be perfectly honest, I, I don't want to take everybody's time because uh, a lot of it has been covered already and um, by uh, Dr. Catalino, um, uh, Professor Miram, as well as um, uh, Dr. Sravanam and I would like to congratulate her to uh, graduating recently. And in fact, um, for the final year medical students, uh, things have been relatively easy because by the time, um, well, first of all, I'd say that um, as um, on the uh, three previous uh, institutions, um, there are no clinical and medical students um, um, in, the, in the hospital. The clerkships and so on have um, ceased for, for the reasons that have been mentioned um, earlier. Um, and um, as uh, Dr. Sravanam said, um, the requirements for final uh, year medical students have pretty much been uh, fulfilled already and uh, that's why they were um, um, allowed to graduate and as um, in Oxford and probably in many other places um, the graduated medical students now uh, fresh doctors um, have been um, um, starting to work as a foundation doctor foundation doctors for those who don't know the UK system um, um, as, as the name says, is kind of junior doctor, very junior doctor level, where they rotate through various uh, medical and surgical specialities to, to acquire um, broad uh, clinical foundation. And of course, the, the problem is greater uh, with the early and uh, middle uh, clinical years. Um, and uh, the uh, as there's no direct contact with patients um, all the teaching is done uh, virtually and um, essentially uh, it is done as lectures seminars and uh, small group teachings um, 
um, for those who uh, don't know the UK system, a lo lots of um, uh, medical schools, um, including so Cambridge, have um, small group teaching, which is kind of vital to go um, into details and help students uh, uh, digest and process um, what they've uh, heard at lectures. And so this, this continues um, as normal. Um, so the, the problem, and which has been already uh, discussed, really um, is about exams. Um, and this is a um, work in progress. Um, there's lots of work happening at national level, as I'm sure um, Dr. Uh, Professor Miram will be able to, to say, um, not only in developing resources that could be shared, and there are some uh, tremendous uh, resources being uncovered uh, throughout the countries. There are uh, uh, individuals um, and institutions who have um, a very unique uh, collection of cases um, so these are being um, worked up and prepared um, and uh, probably will be made available um, uh, nationally. And also there are um, efforts being made to uh, prepare uh, exam systems. Um, of course, the security is the, is the ultimate uh, sort of issue. And um, various AI companies have been involved in making this happen. I've spoken to uh, Professor Garnell, um, who is uh, another endocrinologist um, and uh, um, one of the deans of our medical school about this yesterday, who is actually in charge of the uh, assessment um, so nationally. And um, I, I think the, the issues will be solved, I think, in, in, in due course fairly, fairly soon. So. Although this seems to be one of the main obstacles it will be solved. And of course, the, the difficulties which uh, we had discussed was, was discussed pretty much by every panelist is the uh, direct contact with patients. Of course, there is an art to um, be able to take proper history and elicit um, all the clinical signs and interpret them because of course, when we read textbooks, when we uh, hear lectures, uh, we are um, sort of learning about the uh, most common um, symptoms and signs. Of, we even have certain probabilities attributed to them. We have lists with most common at the beginning and less common uh, further down the line. But it's, it's quite another story how um, um, when we see a patient and say, actually, is that real? Is it not? Is it um, just by the way, is it caused by um, pain? And often in, in a real patient, we have several um, uh, uh, levels of uh, symptoms and perhaps several conditions that can uh, influence the final uh, look uh, of a particular symptom. So, however, I, I will go to the first speaker, Dr. Catalino, and say, yes, um, medical students are Bayesian uh, systems. They're very intelligent systems. And I strongly believe that COVID is not going to be here forever. So I think we need to take advantage of what we have and fill the databases with cases, uh, learn uh, basic principles so that when um, we release medical students on to the patients on, on the wards, um, they will be able to then um, fine tune, fine train their databases and systems so that they can become um, great physicians and I'm sure they will. Tom, two minutes more. Well, to be honest, that's pretty much what what what, uh, what I wanted to say. I'm now I, I could I could dive into you know any area uh, deeper and deeper. I think um, I might just lay uh, let um, other speakers having slightly more time. Thank you very much, Tom. So get well soon, and be glad to your wife. Also get well soon. So I miss very much to come to Cambridge again and gave a 3D lecture with you for Cambridge. I hope that Corona gone soon, then I can come Cambridge again, so stay healthy, Tom. 
Thank you very much, Rekha. Thank you. Thank Same you. to you Thank and so every much. panelist. Thank you so much. So, uh, we're going now to Stanford University from San Francisco, United States. I have a Budi Veriawan. So, Budi, number one is we proud of you. You are Indonesian uh, pediatric critical care doctor who work in, in, in Stanford. Not, are you still Indonesian or American? Uh, I'm, I'm American actually, so. Oh, it's okay, don't worry. But your, your heart is half in Indonesia, right? <laughs> Well, actually, you know, before this COVID hit, I was supposed to fly back home to visit my family and my mother uh, and had to cancel last minute the flight because of the, uh, the COVID. And, uh, you know, certainly this is not an easy time for everyone. Uh, you know, here in uh, San Francisco, we, we were a little bit earlier in terms of closing down uh, and putting a shelter in place. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you compare city by city throughout the United States, I mean, we could say that we were a bit lucky in the sense of that our healthcare system has not been um, overwhelmed. In fact, that, uh, you know, I would have to say that even in, uh, in our uh, adult as well as our children's hospital, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the patient's number have decreased significantly. Our Emergency room, for example, has seen about 50% less of patients. Um, um, you know, I, I think it has to do with the fact that uh, that people are afraid to come to the emergency room because of they're they're afraid to expose to uh, get exposed into the, uh, the COVID. Uh, there were even um, news in the televisions uh, recently that uh, some you know uh, some people who has had a uh, symptom of you know. A myocardial, myocardial infarctions, then they came last minute to the emergency room with the chest pain. Uh, so this is something concerning and I think, uh, you know, that's part of the, uh, um, the public, um, um, you know, uh, announcements that the university decided to make to, you know, to, to convince people that, you know, there are, you know, if, if you have other problems, uh, you have to come to the hospital. So. Um, you know, having said that, I think, uh, like everyone else, I think we are dealing with the same issue with, uh, with, the, uh, uh, with the medical education, uh, you know, especially, you know, the past two months since, uh, you know, we, we, the state of California decided to put something what we call shelter in place uh, at the beginning of March. So um, a lot of company, uh, in here in the Bay Area, they decided to go online and ask the, you know, uh, the worker to start working from home even before the announcement from the governor. And, uh, uh, and uh, the university actually closed down at the beginning of March and sent every, every students back to their uh, families. Um, and that put us in the position scrambling, trying to figure out like what to do. What I'm gonna try to show you is, is actually uh, some of you know, uh, the websites that, you know, that we had in place even before the COVID. I think they helped somewhat in terms of um, how to educate uh, these medical students. And again, this, I'm, I'm just speaking and I'm representing only from the Department of Pediatrics. I cannot uh, say much about uh, you know, the rest of the medical schools. Uh, we have, uh, 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 you know, large sort of hospital. So, um, you know, that is, you know, our mission. So let me let me just go uh, start uh, putting the slides. So, so if you look at the, you know, I think I think it's similar like what Michael said. I think our, I mean, the United States or medical system is pretty much. Uh, if you look at the, uh, the core curriculum uh, for uh, what we call a clerkship, usually happens in the third year of medical school. Um, and then you have something what we call a sub-internship or we, what the US students call a sub-I. Uh, and and in, uh, in Stanford, we call it a Pediatrics 300A and Pediatrics 330A. So the 300A is the core uh, curriculum in introductions into the pediatrics uh, world. And 
you know, unfortunately, you know, there is, if you, you can click here uh, and, and open up uh, the link and that will open up, but unfortunately this is all a uh, password protected and I cannot share it. I, I, will, I will try to, uh, I, I make some pictures of it. So for example, if you, if you open, if you click off the 300A, for example, that would give uh, give you sort of like the um, the overview uh, what is the pediatric 300A, what we call a pediatric clerkships uh, at Stanford University, and uh, you know these are my colleagues who who are you know leading the uh, the, the clerkship pro uh, the clerkship program, and then if you look at the left side, for example, there are syllabus and and all the assignments, the schedule, the resources. So we we I will be lucky in the term of we started a bit early. And on the right side, if you can take a look, I think you can find all kind of uh, link that will allow the students to, to either you know, pick up the assignments by the computer or interact with the professor or interact with, the, with their, with their uh, students, uh, colleagues and stuff like that. So if you go to the syllabus, obviously, I mean, this is, this is just an overview of what our uh, missions to teach uh, the medical students are starting from, you know, the, you know, the patient's care, the, uh, the professionalism and so on and so on. I'm not gonna go into detail on that. I'm just trying, I'm just trying to show it like how we're gonna take this core uh, uh, overview of the education, some missions that we have to fulfill and trying to, to use uh, several different venues. So, and if you look, if you go back and one of that uh, click that you do, uh, you will be connected to, uh, to what we call a uh, pediatric residency and the clerkship. So, and then here you will have a, a lot of links that would help us interacting with the students. So you can click, for example, uh, to Zoom link. So this is how we, um, we don't, you know, most because of the COVID, we don't do bedside uh, round anymore. So. We do everything uh, throughout the uh, Zoom link, uh, and uh, you know after we do uh, the si uh, the morning reports and the uh, the round and stuff like that, there will be only one physicians with one residence, and maybe one of the students, uh, usually the sabai, will go into the room and and examine the patient. So. Uh, that way, you're not going to expose everyone uh, or a big groups of, uh, of uh, physicians and students to, uh, uh, to patients or, you know, or sp uh, trying to spread the, uh, uh, the disease. So, and then, you know, you can see also there are uh, several different links. Uh, you can see the education schedule uh, in the afternoon, uh, for example. So, and... And if you want to chat and if you want to interact with each other, there is a, there is a way we can text, text message. Uh, because of the, the pediatrics education doesn't only happen in the children hospital. For example, there is uh, several other hospitals that, that does the fulfill the mission of the education. So we, we are allowing ourselves just trying to you know, connect to, with each other. Again, unfortunately, some of this Link is a is password protected, but if if someone is willing or ha wants to get some information, I might be able to access it. Now I will be able to share some of them. I might not be able to share every one of them. So, three minutes, yeah. And and again, this is just the uh, uh, the the other the other format of the the platform that we that we created. Obviously, it's. Uh, we are very biased and sponsored by Apple, probably <laughs> as you can see. Uh, and this is how you know. Again, we are we are trying to reach with each other and trying to educate uh, our students. So the last one that I would like to to show you is actually um, so. These are these are an example of of what uh, the what we cre trying to create it actually as part of the theoretical lecture of uh, uh, during the, of its rotations. I mean, you can take a look. I mean, there is there is a general resources. There is you know uh, its individual uh, uh, division or uh, subdivisions, and 
each of them has linked with either a library or, or other resources within Stanford uh, or other university that we can access. Some of them are linked to, to Zoom. Uh, some of them are linked to you know, national database like NIH and stuff like that that will allow us to get access to the, uh, uh, to the other lecture. So if you, if you click to one of them, for example, this is, this is you know, my area, this is Learn PICU. This will give us some, some you know, ways to interact with the students uh, using the videos, using uh, case descriptions. Uh, this is another link that's not necessarily from the Stanford, but it's all, uh, it has to do with the, uh, with the emergency uh, pediatric cases. Uh, there are other uh, Stanford uh, 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 created uh, uh, links such as like, you know, like in this case, like newborn exam, and and if you click to the to this link here, that will allow you to get some interaction of the uh, video and stuff like that. So some of them, like I said, like uh, uh, I would, you know, like this Excel sheet, I can, I will be glad to uh, share it with everyone, so everyone can can uh, can click and uh, reach into that uh, uh, into that link. And lastly, uh, this is. A great work that that was initiated by by our uh, residents. Uh, you know, basically all all the data about the, the COVID, in, uh, starting from uh, from the clinical pictures, um, how we you know how how COVID was spread, how you know how we take care of uh, uh, COVID on the on the ventilations on ECMO, how we intubate the patients on uh, with COVID. And this is all, uh, also that's something that I can share with, with everyone that's interested. Okay, Budi. Hello, Budi. Yes, I, I'm here. That's, that's, that's all. Thank you very much. Come to Indonesia and we can enjoy Nasi Padang. Always, always a pleasure. <laughs> okay, so we're going to Singapore from National University of Singapore. We have here Professor Lao Tang Ching. So he is a rheumatologist. He is very young, vice dean of uh, NUS, and also so dynamic uh, young guys. So uh, uh, Lao Tang Ching, before you start, I've been in your hospital when we make a MOU with NUS, and I understand. You have a very, very good facility, very good strategy. You have everything against the COVID-19. But what I listen, more and more positive COVID-19 in Singapore is surprise, right? Please say to your minister, probably you're doing too many rapid tests. So, <laughs> so, so. The more you do many rapid tests, the more you get positive. Don't do the that. Then you scary of you. Okay, Tang Jing, go ahead. Thank you. Um, can you all hear me? I hope so. Yeah. So thank you very much, uh, Professor Eka, for this opportunity to uh, share with you the uh, NUS Yonglin School of Medicine experience. And I really uh, also uh, thank all our colleagues from different parts of the world for sharing your views, and I've learned a lot. Um, so we did a survey of our students uh, about how their learning may be affected uh, by COVID-19. And not surprisingly, most of them are actually still very determined to continue their education, and they didn't regret coming into medicine. But for the students, what they are more concerned about is whether they can be introduced back into the clinical environment uh, in a safe way because they don't want to um, bring the virus back to their family and also for some of them they also feel that they are worried about uh, imposing on the clinical uh, healthcare workers because they are already so busy with COVID-19 patients and whether their learning uh, will affect the work um, of the healthcare providers. So what, whatever we try to do to reintroduce the students back into the clinical environment, we have to take into account of all these concerns. And so, um, although we have stopped the clinical attachment in February and March, but as of April, May and June onwards, we are reintroducing the students 
from the penultimate, penultimate year and gradually more to the year three and year four students as well. And the strategy of doing so is that we actually have um, some of the mitigation measures and precautionary measures put in place. For example, the need for uh, self temperature monitoring and travel advisory, um, the need to observe all the quarantine orders if the students are exposed before, uh, the need to even uh, have a trace together app, for example, that will allow the students to keep track of um, who they have come into contact with um, using a Bluetooth technology so that in case we need to do contact tracing, it will be um, facilitated. And of course, the students have to keep a log of the patients that they have seen and so on and so forth. And very importantly, the students are also uh, adequately trained with uh, personal protection equipment so that they are really um, safe, even if they have to be exposed to the COVID-19 uh, patients. And we also want to um, ensure that the students are reduced in terms of the numbers that are posted back into the clinical environment. So what we did was we have a slightly more compressed uh, clinical curriculum. In other words, instead of the usual duration of exposure in the clinical environment, you will have half that duration so that the other half will be spent on campus doing uh, clinical training as well. And because of that, we actually can reduce the number of students posted back into the wards. And this uh, seems to be a good way because then the healthcare tutors will not feel burdened by so many students around. The students will have better supervision as well. And so these are some of the risk mitigation, uh, for example. Not only they are in smaller groups back into the wards, they also will have to practice strict physical distancing. Um, they will also have to observe certain requirements such as a washout period and cohorting within the hospital so that they do not um, have a chance of spreading the virus around too readily. And we also have uh, limited some of the wards and uh, spaces in the hospital as high risk areas and they should not go there. So these are the ways that we try to reassure our students and our tutors that the students can be reintroduced back into the clinical environment in a safe way. Um, and this is just one of the strategy that we try to adopt. For example, each posting will now have half the duration of clinical training and they therefore in each hospital will have half the original number of students at any one time. They will stay in the one hospital throughout the rotation and only in a designated area so that cross contamination of the students to other uh, healthcare providers will be minimized. And where possible, we will have a two weeks washout period when they are switching from one hospital to another. And in addition, we actually work with the uh, crack shoot directors to really focus on what is essential when the students are back in the wards. For example, as mentioned by many of you, the need to develop that communication skills um, to build rapport with our patients because that cannot be done well with just simulated patients alone. And also the concept of holistic care of patients to explore their goals of care, ideas, concerns, and expectations because this is again, valuable uh, learning for our patients uh, and students. And of course, uh, physical examination technique with real patients, clinical reasoning with real patients, dealing with uncertainty with real patients and that kind of Bayesian um, um, reasoning that's required as we modify our diagnosis, as we pick up new uh, information along the way uh, throughout the care journey. And of course, procedural skills with real patients and also learning skills associated with working in the ward, such as the use of electronic medical record, et cetera. And very importantly, also the interprofessional education competencies on how to work with the nurses, allied health, and other professions within the ward. So we'll try to focus on these aspects as much as possible during their clinical ward attachment so that during their campus-based learning um, that is clinically orientated, we will focus on the other skill sets. And so for the campus-based learning, we try to use standardized patients so that they can still practice the, uh, the art of uh, history taking and physical examination and also some interpretation of test results and so on. We also uh, experimented with using real patients and Zoom-based so that they can interact with the patients remotely and continue to uh, learn how to take history and interact with real patients. But of course, the disadvantage is that we cannot have the haptics in terms of training them in such a situation. And we also want to uh, use case-based discussion uh, walk around with real patients in the world. So we try to see whether the very same uh, data that's available for real patients can be remotely assessed so that the students can still do a walk around remotely, even though they are not physically in the world. And of course, we, like many of you, we use online case-based discussion and use of virtual patients to enhance the uh, campus-based learning. And here is just an example of um, how we use the Zoom-based uh, platform to have um, the tutor as well as the simulated patients 
and different students being uh, logged in from different sites to still have some kind of simulated uh, learning using standardized vision. And actually the feedback from the students have been very good because they still do have the chance to get um, consultation and uh, group discussion after the encounter with the standardized patient. And here I just want to show an example of a recording of what we do uh, in terms of learning online. So this is just one of the um, learning management system that we use. One of the good things that happened during COVID-19 was we actually have more time now. So some of the important topics that we have always wanted to teach our students could now be learned. So for example, one of the topics was traditional Chinese medicine, how we can interact uh, with um, maybe Western medicine. And so here I just have a recording uh, of uh, Zoom-based learning. And so, so you can see that the students are logging on, although their social etiquette wasn't very good, they're actually eating fried chicken. And we try to um, interact with the students. Yeah, so just, just an example of using uh, Zoom base to still have an interactive discussion with the students. And here is another uh, website that we felt is quite helpful. I'd like to share with you all. Um, so this is uh, called Path Web. So it's actually uh, available for anyone to uh, log on. So a lot of our pathology and other uh, case discussions based on pathology specimens are actually uh, online. And this has been useful for our students to learn as well. And what I think very importantly is the uh, personal protection equipment training. So we have some online pre-reading plus hands-on practical training. And here is just an example of how they are taught how to do their hand washing, their uh, full PPE use. And we're also teaching them how to do nasal swap and specimen preparation in case the students are activated to help out in the community to do nasal swap. And interestingly, we also managed to conduct clinical examination uh, using standardized patient and observing all the physical distancing measures are in place. So you can see that the students are actually wearing masks. The standardized patients are also wearing masks. And actually, we also limited the congregation of examiners by giving them individual bento so that they don't have to come together anymore. So with that, actually, we managed to conduct a final year exam uh, in March. And in fact, even in May, we're doing another final year exam for those who didn't make it or they missed the exam because they are not well. And I think uh, this is something that's still feasible. And I'd like to share also that for online examination, we managed to use um, an online exam system plus Zoom proctoring so that the students are observed when they are doing the exams. And although there are certain uh, challenges, but we managed to overcome some of those and it was quite successfully done for our year one students. And I also want to share that actually because the students now have more time when they are, because many of them were supposed to go onto their elective during their March, April and May period. Um, so they cannot go back into the clinical environment. Yeah, and so what we did was we actually introduced pathway programs. And these are some of the examples of the pathways like health informatics, uh, inquiry and thinking, health and humanities and so on. So for 10 weeks, they actually are exposed to some of this concept and they actually do projects that are relevant in these areas. And our feeling is that actually this is a good opportunity for the medical students to be exposed to knowledge and sciences, which actually allow them to think more laterally in terms of problem solving skills that are related to healthcare problems. And here I'd like to just also uh, suggest that in case any of you are free tomorrow, we do have a presentation online for our health, uh, our pathway programs. So any of you who are interested can log on and observe some of the um, cases or some of the projects that are going to be presented by our students. And many of the things that I've shared actually is captured in this uh, map, uh, pub, map pub, um, article, uh, response and lesson learned about the COVID-19 crisis by the School of Medicine. So again, uh, you can uh, re refer to this and hopefully uh, continue to give us feedback on how we can do better as well. So with that, I thank you for the time. Yeah. Thank you, Tang Jing. And I, I welcome any questions. I hope Singapore soon also recover that we can visit each other. Thank you very much, Tang Jing. Definitely. I look forward to that. My regard to your dean. He is so busy. Yeah? Okay. Thank so you. we're going thank now you. to Jakarta. So I would like to invite Professor Ali Faria, uh, gastroenterologist, 
He is not only dean of University of Indonesia, but he is a public figure that uh, give so many opinions to public, to government about how to fight against COVID-19. Professor Ari, please. Okay, thank you, Professor Eka. So can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, very good. Yes, of yeah. Yeah, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for Professor Eka and also from Professor Mudu to invite me to talk in this important seminar. And also I would like to offer my uh, warmest welcome to our colleagues, especially for Dr. Tang from NUS. Uh, we have met uh, before for a couple of times. Uh, and also some speakers from UK, uh, US, and also uh, other place. So <clears throat> we know that uh, it is a hard for us about the global COVID-19. And you know that the WHO advised us to practice social distancing. So that's why uh, we, uh, our clinic students, also pre-clinic students, uh, back home and then uh, we do uh, study from home. Okay, you can slide, uh, please, the next slide, please. So you can see our slide here. Professor Eka. Professor Eka, can you hear me? Right. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so next slide, please. Thank you so much. Okay, go ahead, Prof. Ali. Okay, next, next slide. Okay, thank you. So, uh, uh, yeah, so here I, I want to show you about the open source module about the COVID 19 pandemic. Uh, in March, our medical education unit from Faculty of Medicine has published uh, what we call that a supervised open source module about the COVID-19 pandemic. So this module purpose is to provide knowledge for medical students and also help professional, uh, professional about the COVID-19 pandemic. So because you know that the many uh, students also enthusiasts from this uh, uh, module, so I will uh, upgrade this module not only for the student but also from the community and other health workers. Okay, uh, and yes, about how about the education? This is uh, the main of our seminar here, especially for the clerks. We know that uh, before we do lecture face to face and also hands on skill training with property and also patient assessment and evaluations. And this COVID area, so we change everything for online, a lecture conducted via video conference, and also for skill training using educational video and also video conference. Uh, how about the assessment or evaluation? This is a little bit uh, tricky for us, but uh, we try to do the patient assessment and evaluation. Uh, especially for specialists and subspecialists only. How about uh, for student, uh, evaluation or exam for the class of student? You know, we have, uh, we have a written test before and also objective structure clinical examination, or C, and also we have uh, case-based discussions taken from patients assessed by the student. Now we chase everything uh, we do the computer-based online tests, and also we perform OC via uh, video conference, and we make uh, some online quiz and discussions based on patient in case report. Uh, yes, please, uh, next slide, please. Okay, so in these pictures, uh, I saw that the, some that our activity, you know, uh, when we, uh, I mean, the, the, the teachers uh, saw about the case illustrations and then uh, discussion around the student. And also here we saw that the, how that the teachers give uh, lecture. And also here, one of uh, quiz evaluations 
we saw the pictures, especially here from uh, skin problems. So it's easy for everybody to uh, know about the disease. And here we see about the, some other quiz. And then we can see here about the OST in forensic and medical legal, uh, medical legal rotations. So every student can use other things uh, from their home. And then uh, the, doc, uh, the lecturer in the other place to show how uh, to perform the forensic uh, uh, surgery or something like that. And uh, yeah, uh, yes, I, we have uh, make an evaluation for the student as well about uh, how they, it is okay with them with online uh, something like this. And then uh, we see that the all, yeah, from our student, that the implemented method of long distance learning is not so different from face-to-face -face learning and they and that they are getting the same value of education meanwhile for student evaluation with exams. Yes, uh, here I want to uh, make some information as well. I mean that the, our students also to be uh, volunteers to help uh, doctors like to support uh, some nutrition and also uh, to prepare what we call that the PPI for uh, health workers. So besides busy in the online uh, study, they also to be a volunteers in to help doctors especially to give the nutrition and also to prepare uh, PPI for uh, health workers. So this is the information from me. I think uh, we can discuss later. Uh, Thank you, Professor Eka. If somebody wants to ask you personally, we can do email for you. Yeah? It's very, very useful and it's a great share for us. So, uh, dear friends, before we go to Yogyakarta, before we go to Yogyakarta, so uh, I remember that many smart people in the world told maybe virus will change everything including our our uh, activities in the congress right so if i see in the picture i think that it's very bright very beautiful maybe 95 percent similar the real offline congress and you know that if this is offline congress world congress costs million dollars and this is very much less costly. Maybe I think that maybe will change. The difference is we cannot gather, we cannot uh, chat together, but quality of scientific, I believe, is similar. Okay, so maybe we need to change our mind in the future, uh, how to go online. Okay, we are going to University Gajah Mada, Yogyakarta. I would like to invite Professor Opa and Professor Ganders. So, these are two ladies hero from Jawa. So in, in uh, Jawa legend, we got Sri Kandi. Okay. <laughs> so we have two, two professors, lady from Kajamada to be really strong. Please, Professor Kandas and Opa to share. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Eka. This is too much introduction. <laughs> Professor Ofa, would you like to uh, start with a brief introduction? Okay, thank you very much. How are you, everyone? Very good. So, you know, this is typical Jogja uh, language, very slow and very nice. <laughs> Greetings from Yogyakarta. Right, yes, right. thank you very much, uh, Prof. Eka, for giving us opportunity for sharing how is the activities of our uh, clerkship right. students during this COVID pandemic. And we have many uh, innovatives because we are in the, we call it in the well, no, nowhere we can go. So we have uh, create many, many uh, activities that we never done before. So I think uh, Professor Gandas will explain in more detail about some activities that we have uh, so far. 
Yeah. Please, Professor Gandes. Yes, okay, thank you, Professor Ofa. Uh, so actually, uh, I follow what uh, Professor Eka suggested, no theory at all. So <laughs> uh, start from uh, 14th of March, there is a degree in, at university level that we have to be prepared with uh, COVID-19. And then uh, that day, the similar day, uh, we organize a coordination with all the clinical uh, Team, and all of us agree to continue the clinical uh, teaching. So uh, by 15th of March, a day after the degree of directors, the dean also announced and decided that clerkship and residency training are continued and should be adapted. And then it should be rescheduled to avoid overtired and every uh, department should evaluate its teaching hospital, especially regarding the safety and the level of supervision. So if the department think that it is uh, uh, necessary to pull up the student, it can be pulled up, but if the department consider that it is still okay to be continued to the, at the teaching hospital, it can be continued. So the announcement from the dean, uh, we use it as, as a backbone to uh, provide uh, learning activities for, for clerkship. So uh, after the dean declared about that, we have a meeting with the team and then the team try to make adaptation. So basically at a clerkship, the activity that we had before pandemic is I think it's quite similar with others, but said like teaching, clinical tutorial, uh, case reflection, case discussion, and many form of assessment. Uh, then the team tried to make guidance, how to adapt its activities uh, during the pandemic. So at 18 of March, 2020, uh, the guidance already there. Every uh, Friday, Every week, we have a meeting between the uh, study, uh, uh, between all the team from every department with the head of the study program. And then uh, we try to see the feasibility, what kind of adjustment we need and so on. So I would like to share and try to divide into two, two times framework. First is before, uh, from 16th of March until 16th of April. Basically, several rotation outside Sarchito Hospital will remain continue. Several rotations still have learning activities as before COVID-19 pandemic, but uh, in safe zone, and reducing frequency. So for example, before the pandemic, we have a regulation that a clinical tutorial should be done twice a week and uh, bedside teaching at least one a week, case reflection at least one a week and so on. And uh, before this condition, some of the several uh, rotation reduced the frequency and uh, provide with different format. Several rotation at that time also started to the adaptation that we propose uh, for synchronous meeting, they use Webex, uh, Zoom, MS Team, and so on. For unsynchronous meeting, uh, we have what we call as Gamel at uh, faculty level and ELO at university level. We also ask each department to write down what kind of activity that can be done, can be conducted during that time, every department. Then 17th on April until 5th of May, because of the progression of the COVID and because of uh, the regulation at university as well, the rotation outside uh, Sarchito Hospital were put totally to Sarchito Hospital. Most of the rotation have moved to online platform using the guidance that we provide uh, uh, earlier. Uh, there is still rotation yeah, that try to use a uh, mixed approach. So for example, taking cases at a hospital, at a safe zone, but then continue to online uh, supervision. And there's also written report regarding the activity. This is just few example, how the online case discussion uh, done. Uh, so this is the example from surgery as well as from uh, ophthalmo department. There are many other examples. And then uh, if you see here, there is a uh, interactive case management using application that uh, developed by one of our uh, lectures in uh, forensic. So basically there is a case and then using that uh, application, uh, the lectures 
the clinical supervisor give or prompt some question. If you find that when what you what should you ask? Then the student try to answer. Then the 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 uh, supervisor give uh, further data, and then the student answer, and so on and so on until the management of the cases ended. And this is a example of the skill demonstration. So. Uh, the teachers, the supervisors demonstrate with simulated passion and then the student, it is a uh, video tape and then the student try to follow using Zoom from home. And this is uh, the other example. Uh, one of the, the department also try to show uh, adaptation. For example, this is when they have to do mini CX. So they don't go to the, the, the passion. But uh, the student was asked to practice physical examination, namnes is uh, to friend or roommate or family. And then connected with Zoom, the lectures observe and then giving additional necessary uh, information. Uh, this is the example that's done by anesthesia department, how to drill uh, procedural skills. And uh, actually there is a video here, how the one of the online discussion is done. So uh, for everybody who want to, to see the full version of the video, uh, we'll be happy to, to share. The next that we're going to do is, uh, because we already have evaluated uh, the program at the uh, department level, but we think it's not enough. So we want to, to do survey at individual level of the student to, to see the achievement of individual competency. So hopefully it can be done on uh, this month. And based on the survey, we're going to design a program to fill up deficiency that we found uh, in the survey. So it can be uh, uh, as a boosting uh, program for the student uh, to be confident regarding their uh, competency examination, uh, competency achievement. We also uh, have a meeting with the student to hear from them uh, what is the weaknesses, what is the good side they found and try to improve, try to list what the student concern or with the, the core team and try to improve. So uh, this is uh, basically uh, uh, the importance of having a routine coordination one a week with the uh, representative from each department. We call it as a coordinator of profession every uh, Friday. So we, we try to to make uh, adjustment from that. Some of the department, uh, like uh, what already shared by previous uh, speakers, uh, still using uh, OSCE as well, but uh, COVID-19 protocol uh, were applied. So temperature measurement, hand washing, so, uh, physical distance and so on maintained. So the OSCE still can be done. And also for multiple choice questions, some department use that one. And also using, using uh, uh, administrative tab, Zoom, to see whether there is a cheating or not something like that. So that's what uh, basically we did. It's far, far from ideal, but we need to continue. We need to try to, to find a way and talk to the student what they need and what should be improved. And hopefully the pandemic will offer very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much from Ova and from Gunners. Please send me good luck, yeah? Missing very much. So we're going to Melbourne University. So with us is Professor Steve Tumbler. So he is the very senior and very experienced chairman of the medical education unit of Melbourne Uni. So Steve, thank you very much. You always support us. And you know that we send our students to Melbourne Uni following the neuroscience blog and it was so beautiful. I hope that you always support us. Please, Steve. Thank you, uh, Professor Ecker, and it's good to see so many colleagues from uh, Indonesian universities here. Um, I also wanted to send my good wishes to you all. We've been very lucky in this country for the way our pandemic's been controlled, and I send my good wishes to those of you 
who have had family, friends and colleagues become very sick, if not die from the disease. So uh, I just wanted to speak about some of the uh, ways we've been approaching the pandemic in Melbourne. I thought I would go way beyond my limits of technical competence and see if I could uh, project behind me what I wanted to talk about rather than sharing a screen. Um, the biggest thing that's worked for us is this effective pandemic suppression being an island nation with uh, politicians who've learned from our tragic bushfires that you listen to scientists when they tell you what needs to happen. We've actually come through it thus far fairly well. So that's helped us. We as a university did decide to cease all clinical placements in March because they were becoming difficult to sustain and our clinical teachers were busy preparing for the pandemic. So that was a decision that was taken. The next point I wanted to make is that we had to make bold decisions. If there ever is a time for making a bold decision within your university, it was now. We rearranged our course. We're lucky being in the Southern Hemisphere. Our year obviously graduates students in December. So in March, April, May, we don't have students close to graduation. We're also lucky that we have a research semester in our final year. And we've been able to swap around our research semester and a clinical semester so that a large number of our students are doing their research right now and into the second half of this year. So they don't need clinical placements. If you have an opportunity to make structural rearrangements, I can certainly recommend it because it means that the students are progressing through their research training, for example, rather than having to worry about um, clinical placements, which are in short supply. So that was a major strategy for us. And the university was uncharacteristically cooperative with these course changes, recognizing the importance of them. We've also used this time of having no students in placement to front load the online content. And everybody's been talking about the importance of the online learning that you've put in place. We have found our students absolutely love it. Now, obviously they're missing their patient contact, but it actually plays to the millennial preferences in many ways to have online learning. And the thing that surprised me is our teachers are loving it as well. We've been wanting to move more online for a number of years, but the resistance has been significant. To have to do it means we've actually managed to gain quite some ground in bringing even some of our more resistant teachers online. Uh, we've actually found that the students are asking many more questions. They're uh, moderating each other's questions. The engagement is a lot better. Uh, you can keep a watch on a small group much better online than you can when you're sitting around in a circle. So I'm not promoting it as a solution to medical education, but I think this has actually helped us think very hard about um, what traditional forms of teaching are actually better done online. It's also made our colleagues share their resources so that all our students have access to the same resources. One activity that occurred quite early in Australia is a mapping of the competencies for graduation. Again, this is work that has been attempted many times in the past, but there was never a good reason for competing it, uh, completing it. Uh, all the medical schools came together and cooperated in a way I've never seen before to actually figure out just what it is that a student needs to be able to demonstrate before you can safely let them graduate from medical school or a training program, whatever it is. So this is work that's long overdue. That document's due to be released next week and I will certainly forward it by this group so that if you're interested in what we in Australia have now set as the minimum standard for safe graduation from a medical school, you're very welcome to look at that. There's nothing there that will surprise you. What probably surprises you is we didn't get it down on paper beforehand. One guiding principle for us has been equity in placements. I know a number of medical schools in this country have struggled to keep students in placement, even though it's been patchy and not everybody's had the same opportunity. We've had to decide that no grades this semester because we cannot trust the uh, reliability of those assessments or their validity, their accuracy. So no grades and also if one student can't be in placement, no student can be in placement until we're confident if they're being an adequate supply. 
I disappeared from this meeting for half an hour to meet with our final year students to announce that they're going back into placement on the 1st of June to complete their training. And we've completely redesigned that final semester so that there's a rolling staggered system of trainee internships, which means that every student will get a minimum of eight weeks. We want to give them 12 weeks, but the best we can guarantee is eight weeks, which we've judged as the minimum for final competence to graduate as doctors. Uh, so that's been a principle that we've applied across our course. The next point is that senior students first. Uh, because we've got a cohort that's due to graduate at the end of this year, they get first go at what placements we can now make available. The first year students obviously all want to be in clinical placements because it's exciting to pretend to be a doctor. That's not important, I'm afraid. What is important is that we use every possible clinical moment to make our senior students competent and then our penultimate group, the students in the third year of our fourth year program, so that they're prepared for graduation the following year. So that's been a principle we've had to ask all our students to adhere to, that those closest to graduation get first go. Uh, the next thing is meaningful work integrated placements. So they're not going back just to sit in the cafeteria and drink coffee. They're going back to actually do meaningful work as trainee interns so that they actually rehearse the role and every moment counts. The uh, simulation and online. Now, one thing that was discussed before I had to leave was the issue of remote exams and how you secure those. That's been a major focus for us. My colleague, Anna Ryan, has developed a whole program in academic integrity and every one of our students has had to do a quick training program and examination in academic integrity and what that means. We've gone very strong on the fact that if you cheat in an online exam, you're not just cheating the examiner, you're cheating your future patients because if you're not ready to graduate, to cheat is actually a patient safety compromise. So that's been very important. The program that we're using is called Exam Soft, and that has a component within it called Examplify. And when you're doing an online exam, it basically takes over the student's computer, shuts down everything but delivering the examination for the period of time. The students are remotely monitored and recorded, and artificial intelligence watches what they do. If there's an unusual thing, it then triggers an incident that a human being reviews. I don't know if anybody else has talked about this while I was away, but I find it fascinating. If a cat jumps up on the desk, the human sees that and says that's not an incident. The thing we're struggling with most is students and their bladders and bowels. It seems that they all need to go to the toilet during a remote proctor exam. That triggers an incident that then needs to be manually reviewed. So we're suggesting to them they sit down with their minds open and their bladder's empty unless they want to be questioned about what they are doing for that time. So my final point then is you can't see it there because I didn't do it properly, but it says to prepare for the worst and hope for the best. What I said to my students just a moment ago was we do not control the virus. It does what it wants. Australia, as I say, has been very successful in suppressing the pandemic. We've had less than 100 deaths in this country but we don't know what's going to happen now that the population's clamoring to be released from isolation. And as many students as possible, we want to get through placements before things get bad again, which could definitely happen. So thank you for the opportunity. Lovely to see colleagues you again. Uh, yes, please. Three minutes, please. Three minutes more. I'm sorry, what was... Three minutes more. Yes, yes, please. Okay. So I can certainly um, talk further about anything people want me to talk about in response to questions. Uh, but really, at the moment, we are um, front-loading as much online content as we can, and we're mapping the curriculum so that as placements become re-available, we can uh, check students off on various things. One thing we've realised is that, to be honest, a physical examination, OSCE, is it really necessary? What it's proving is the student can simulate or replicate the movement of hands. 
for me, the breakthrough moment was a couple of years ago when I was examining a student on an abdominal OSCE and they laid the patient down the wrong way and then me percussed, measured and reported the hepatic dimensions and the splenic dimensions on the wrong side. That patient did not have situs inversus. What it meant is the students could have got full marks in what they were doing with their hands and zero marks what they were doing with their head. So again, this pandemic is making us ask questions about what does a physical exam OSCE really prove? And are there better ways of doing that with a mini CX or other work-based assessment once we're back in the real world? Thank you very much, Steve. Pleasure, Erica. Please I hope you like the shirt. I always continue to work together with us, yeah, with our Indonesian uh, medical school. We need your assistance. Okay, so we go to uh, University at Jaya, Jakarta. I want to invite Dr. Yuda Turana. He is a neurologist and he is the dean of Atmajaya University. And I know, by Yuda, that you have a very beautiful program for COAS, yeah, for clerkship while they are at home. Please, by Yuda. Hello, by Yuda, are you there? Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. For uh, Prof. Eka for nice uh, introduction uh, and also great honor also for Atma Jaya can join to this uh, wonderful uh, meeting. Uh, maybe the slide. So I think the the same uh, experience with uh, the other uh, faculty at Jaya on uh, mid of March, we remove the student from uh, direct uh, patient care uh, within days uh, and school uh, were loading course materials online and on uh, March uh, 30 that uh, Atmaje starts the regular online uh, program. And uh, we have like the two weeks program uh, uh, and focus just only on knowledge and hope after the pandemic, uh, we focus on uh, psychomotor and because we realize that medical training is hands-on activity, and uh, student, uh, I think uh, in this two weeks uh, we'll have the already learned the content, uh, and hope uh, after the pandemic uh, we have to like the as many patients as possible uh, once uh, they get uh, back uh, in the campus. So uh, we have like the uh, platform online program with. Uh, Teams, uh, Microsoft, and also the Zooms, but uh, the the university I think uh, suggest to use uh, the Teams uh, Microsoft because I think uh, please, uh, it's please, more the camera. Yeah. Oh, you okay. Like sorry, sorry. Sorry. Okay. okay you like and uh, yeah, and uh, we suggest uh, use the Teams uh, Microsoft because. Uh, very important to is more easy for the like for the dean and the vice dean to evaluate uh, all departments if we use the same uh, platform online uh, learning and uh, all the students uh, we suggest to use and to install about the uh, the application of Microsoft Teams uh, and I think. Uh, 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 with the IT uh, support. If have the trouble when they connect to the uh, program, and the instructor usually uploading uh, is up to the instructor. Like usually, the previously uh, tap lectures or uh, recording the new ones, and uh, I think the same with the Gajah Mada, like the step by step videos on skills and. Uh, also, uh, we suggest the student uh, to see the like uh, the video from the YouTube, and also I think uh, lucky for us now a lot of like uh, webinar and uh, online lecture from the academic uh, societies. Actually, in the my presentation, I don't know uh, you can see the, uh, uh, the 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 picture about the uh, the teams. Uh, the teams like, like the in the Microsoft Teams, we have like the several channels in uh, every department have like the specific channels 
and if in in every channels usually the five dean or the dean uh, follow and evaluate the channels and uh, every two weeks we evaluate the program and uh, usually in every department uh, sends the schedule of the online meeting every day and usually the the dean and the vice dean and the also the head of the uh, uh, program study usually follow uh, randomly in uh, every clinic uh, department and uh, okay uh, maybe uh, uh, the share about the uh, the slide about the uh, the teams the picture of the our uh, this is the script in the our uh, teams in the example in the neurology department uh, usually we have like the everyday everyday schedules uh, like between uh, just only two hours for discussion usually but uh, the student must prepare must prepare by themselves by by themselves like uh, before the meeting like must read the book or must read the source from the uh, YouTube and the other source uh, that uh, we decide before and in the meeting, uh, usually in two hours meeting, uh, we just only the discuss uh, 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 what the question from the student and discuss uh, the I think the uh, the wrapping all the things of the uh, the topic. And I don't know, uh, uh, I I cannot see my presentation, but in my presentation also uh, I, I show about the the schedule uh, and also the the program uh, maybe after uh, the meeting I will share also uh, I think it's very happy to share about the, our experience uh, my PowerPoint in that PowerPoint uh, uh, I show about the, the schedule uh, one example uh, the teams the in the neurology department and uh, uh, there's also the picture about how we communicate with the student. Uh, like in this example, like if uh, the topic with dementia, before we uh, have the online meeting, usually uh, I uh, only trigger by two questions. Uh, what uh, do you think about uh, the meaning of the comprehensive uh, treatment and dementia? Something like that. Uh, based on the question, uh, the student uh, usually uh, uh, must uh, see the video first and uh, after that we schedule just only two hours for discuss uh, about uh, that video and uh, about uh, all the important things how to take care of the dementia something like it so uh, that, that's it my uh, experience in Atma Jaya so uh, uh, we have like two weeks program uh, in the uh, minor department and major department uh, uh, the same week just only uh, two weeks and uh, hope after the the COVID uh, pandemic uh, and uh, we can like uh, uh, to continue with the uh, uh, the clinic rotation as usual again uh, thank, thank you, you, Prof. Eka. Thank you, yeah. thank you, and sorry for missing your presentation. Next time you have to do yeah, it. it's okay. One, one, one okay. question, Payuda, yeah. one question. You said that you cut about half of the clerkship. So yes, the yes. question is, you calculate it as the length of the period, or what do you think? Yeah, uh, I think we uh, we already discussed with the, all the, the departments, uh, the minor and uh, major department. Uh, at the first plan, uh, we, uh, the dean and the vice dean uh, just think about uh, two weeks for the minor department and four weeks for the major department. But after discussion with the public health department and the other major clinic department, I think it's very difficult. It's just on, uh, four weeks only the online learning. So we decide all the same, all departments same, uh, two weeks. But after that, I think we continue with the same uh, like before. In major, it's still like ten weeks. That already we uh, already have two weeks, and the minor just only continue with uh, three three weeks left. Uh, that's it, Rebecca. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Pak. So we understand yeah. that 
uh, we need to remember we cannot give any bonus to Koas, right? Because they need yes. to have really competence, right? So yes. it's our problem because we can just cut, 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 and we cannot pass them as a doctor if they are not competent. So, yes. so we will talk agree. later yeah. in Aki, yeah, from Budu, yeah. from Budu, maybe later you give your opinion, yeah? So we go to Bandung, yeah? Bandung is the, the place that I love it very much. So a cool place. So Dr. Setiawan, I hope you already come back from Goes, from Tangku Bantrao. Dr. Setiawan, go ahead. Yes. What, is your, okay. what are you doing with your Goas? Thank you very much, Prof. Eka. Good day for everybody. I would like to share a little bit different from the others because man, uh, everything has been discussed about what happened with our flagship program during COVID-19 and there is no significant difference what we have done here in Bandung in comparison to other centers. So I just want to raise the question whether whether does it work, what is perceived by the students versus the lecturers. So I will give you some data what we have done by uh, having organizing quick survey both to the students and also to our lecturer uh, representing 11 uh, departments. So if you look at here, uh, the, the change of, of, of mood for clinical education from face-to-face -to, -face to online is quite comparable because uh, at least we can see around 50% the, the lecturers and also the students say the quality is quite equal or better. So I think uh, we can still uh, say that uh, even though we change to online, but the effectiveness is quite quite okay, 50-50 in comparison to the face-to-face. -face. If you look at the preceptor ability and also availability to do this uh, activity, it is also quite good that the majority of the preceptor can, can perform, can facilitate the online session. But if we look at the capacity of the preceptor to be improved, there is a different uh, perspective uh, of the lecture compared to the students. Uh, the lecturer has a good insight because most of the lectures come from the baby boom uh, era, which is not a digital native, they have to learn. So they have good insight that uh, they have to improve the IT literacy. But the students give appreciation because in fact, the online session can still uh, be done. Uh, the, 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 the thing is that the students say uh, still there is lack of content and also communication skills of our uh, lecturers as a preceptor and also something to do with the motivation because if we don't see the students directly how can we still have a good impact and interaction and also how can we facilitate and also motivate the students and the rest say nothing to be improved if you look at the various platform, I think not only Zoom, even though the majority still use Zoom, we also have other alternatives because the university has collaboration with Google. So we also use Google Meet, Google Classroom, and also the university has its own platform as a so-called live Unpad. Now we, we talk about the feelings of the student. Uh, yeah, we have to be careful that certainly uh, the students majority say they are still afraid of the fulfillment of competency. And I agree with the idea from Gajah Bandung University that we have to really look at uh, in more detail about the deficiency, what uh, has to be, uh, what you call it, uh, fulfilled uh, later on. So we also prepare to have a boost program after COVID. Hopefully, hopefully we, we, we can do it, let's say, uh, during semester break so that uh, the students uh, will not uh, lose the, the, the time for, for that. Uh, while the lecturers uh, see what happened during uh, structured activity, the students show enthusiasm, even though inside perhaps the students still, still have uh, afraid of fulfillment of the competency. Therefore, we, we are trying now a uh, virtual patient to mimic the situation also to trigger several competency, which is very important for the uh, future doctor. By having uh, the XR clinician application to, to do a problem solving learning. And the good thing is that we have a direct feedback through this activity 
we can see the the strength and weakness of uh, each individual student in terms of clinical reasoning, management ability, and also this application is very complete because it embraces not only the clinical aspect but also psychological and also economical value of its uh, its management or treatment uh, proposed by the students. And also we ask the students, uh, the participant students about uh, his or himself by using this uh, new method for virtual patient. And they said that it is quite good in terms of diagnostic process, knowledge application, systematic process of comprehensive management, and also experience clinical process. But certainly there are many more something to be improved uh, from our students. While this is the application, what should be uh, improved and also what went well, what is the advantages by using this application. And even though we only have nine samples, but eight of, out of uh, nine say that we should still use this for clinical crisis, at least to uh, challenge the students with uh, quite a real situation. In addition to the clinical activities, also we have voluntary activity and it allows our students to interact with the uh, community uh, using a teleconsultation. And we have a, a application here that the community can, can uh, use a so-called Amari COVID software to, to screen the, the condition. And based on that, the students will contact. And until now, there are around 800 communication. Uh, and it is quite interesting that uh, for some cases, there are so uh, many communications undergone until nearly one hour. But in, in average, it, it, it is less than 50 minutes. So it is quite good to uh, give opportunity for our students to communicate with the, with the patient uh, in terms of community-based uh, uh, response system for COVID-19. I think that's all. So thank you very much, Prof. Eka, what we can say from Bandung. Thank you very much, Prof. Tiawan. Very beautiful presentation. Yeah? I hope that you really inspire so many leadership because really beautiful. Yeah? So hope everything better soon. I miss to come to Bandung again. And yes. We will eat a curry dog. Yeah? Uh, yeah, yeah. And also cycling, don't forget. Uphill okay, challenge so, for you. Yeah, so we going to the most east province of Indonesia to Papua. Uh, Dr. Trajanus Jambire is a surgeon and he is dean of University Cendrawasi. So Cendrawasi is the symbol of Unchen, the most beautiful bird in the world. Please, Dr. Trajanus, share what's happening in Papua. Yeah. Thank you for uh, Professor Eka. You inviting me uh, in the discussion. Yeah. I am the medical faculty of uh, Universitas Cendrawasi. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Gerson. I'm the vice dean, academic vice dean of uh, Cendrawasi University Medical Faculty. And uh, we are very sorry because we don't prepare any slides for this afternoon because uh, it's a bit um, sudden for us. So, uh, but we would like to uh, explain about the conditions in the eastern part of Indonesia in uh, Papua province that uh, we we are not uh, different from other uh, regions that we we uh, suffered from the COVID uh, nineteen disease here as well and. In terms of our flagship in the University of Chandrawasi, uh, since 15th of March 2020, we already uh, stopped all the activity in the hospital, uh, in the satellite, and also in the affiliate uh, hospital. Uh, we stopped all the flagship because uh, the uh, the provincial governments already. Uh, close all the activity in the university um, and suggest us to uh, stop all the activity in the hospital as well for the educations. Um, as you know that 
uh, our the government of Papua is the first government who closed the airport in Indonesia uh, and also the the um, for the ship so so the ship cannot come to uh, Papua and in terms of the concern of the parents we cannot uh, we cannot guarantee that the uh, the clerkship could that we conduct in the hospital could be safe could be uh, could be a, a safe environment for the students therefore the uh, co- we we take the concern of the parents really seriously and that's why uh, we are currently stop all the activity in the hospital uh, but we are now start starting to uh, build a platform for the uh, online online learning for the uh, clerkship student because as you know that the, in Papua we don't have such a luxury uh, facility and also the internet here is not uh, coverage all by 4G or LTE as in a big city so we are trying to uh, build the platform for conveniency uh, for the students as well as for the teacher but in the in the um, in the level of uh, students who are not in the clerkship we we still uh, we, we use the university platform just to teach and uh, to do the discussion and and etc and etc so uh, oh okay thank you professor eka so uh, i think that's all what we can share because uh, papua is uh, a little bit a little bit different with the other gov- uh, the other province so um but we are start, well, still trying to uh, develop the platform so we can deal with the situations and hopefully the COVID-19 will, uh, will be stopped soon, soon enough so we can uh, start again with the clerkship in the university. Thank you very much. So, uh, thank you very much. I know that Papuan people is very strong. There are not many COVID there. The COVID are brave to go to Papua. <laughs> so we go, we go to Sulawesi Utara. We have here Dr. Billy Kebal is a Dean of University Samratulangi. Oh, Pakepo, you have a lovely underwater. Next time, why don't we meet in, the, in Manado and we go to get the diving in Bunaken, yeah? Go, go yeah, ahead, Billy. Nice city. Go ahead, Pak Billy. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity given to me. Uh, I appreciate for Professor Eka that uh, arranged the, this, I call it international talk, talk show, not only national, but international talk show. Uh, we are sharing about the experience uh, for the clerkship education during the COVID-19 pandemic. This is uh, North Syllabus, Manado, and this is the our head uh, office of UNSRAT, is head office of head office of faculty of medicine, and this is our main teaching hospital, uh, hospital of Professor Kando, the first uh, dean in uh, faculty of medicine. I think, uh, the situation uh, regarding the COVID-19, the pandemic of COVID-19 is similar, uh, not only in Indonesia, but almost on almost all in the world. And our government already uh, issued some uh, rules and the rules is about how to prevent the distribution of COVID-19 in uh, university institution. In 15th of March 2020, our rector already issued also the uh, rules how to work and studying from home. Okay, this is, Professor Eka, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, 
you can hear and see my uh, presentation. Very good. Very good. Right. Go okay. ahead. This is uh, on the uh, brief, uh, our profile, academic profile, the number of academic staff. And in the clinical staff, we have 78 permanent staff and 60, 65 non-permanent staff that belongs to Ministry of Health. They are distributed in 15 departments. Uh, about our students, the clerkship medical students in regular phase, we have 164 and about 200. They are uh, already ready for uh, conduct the national competence exam, what we call UKMPPD. Actually, 161 students were already uh, ready, be ready for uh, phase the uh, March, no, no, May. On May 2020, the period of uh, competence exam, but regarding the uh, COVID-19, the examination was uh, canceled. We have the, the, the total length of uh, clerkship phase. We have 74 weeks plus eight to 10 weeks for strengthening their knowledge before they uh, conduct the national competence exam. Actually, in uh, according to these rules from rector, in 15 of March, after that, in uh, 16 of March, all the students in hospital, we pull out because we worry about the transmission of uh, COVID-19 because they are, maybe they will exposed by the virus. So after two weeks uh, issued uh, the, the decree from the rector, we have meeting and we decided meeting to, to implement the uh, studying and working from home. This is the, the profile about uh, each department, how to allocate the students, the length of, length of their clerkship period in uh, all, all the departments. For example, the obstetric surgery and internal medicine we, they do five weeks for uh, distance learning, virtual learning, and we hope that Maybe after the of COVID-19. Oh yeah, okay, okay. So I think the the slide is too many. So uh, how, why uh, how we implement uh, the the distance learning in uh, the clerkship phase? We we divided it in. Cognitive based, the three domain of learning is cognitive and affective and psychomotor competence. Uh, actually, for the cognitive based competence, we still uh, uh, conduct the case presentation by a student or a group of students, uh, how they perform the clinical procedure. Some students are given tasks to create videos. Uh, they do also uh, journal reading and literature review. And we also have clinical key as a scientific academic uh, source for the uh, uh, students and the lecturer to use it as a, a scientific source. Uh, for the effective based competence, it's difficult for us because uh, it's limited experience for us to assess students, students' attitude by only watching his or her performance in the video for psychomotor based competence let 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 me uh, show you about uh, this is the, the example of how the student uh, perform create the video where they use a uh, uh, case a case study it is about pap smear it's too long duration no it's only example and the second one is this is about uh, gynecology examination. So the student create by their self and perform to the lecturer the academic staff according to the objective learning. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Next time you show me how, how creative is your student, yeah? We go to uh, Universitas Muslim Indonesia Makassar. 
my old friend Professor Saripudin Wahid PhD. I know that he, that I know that you are going to have an online Sumpa doctor. So time for you, Professor Saripudin. Okay, Pak Saripudin, go ahead. Bella, thank you for my chance, opportunity to share in this uh, meeting what we have done in our Faculty of Medicine. Uh, actually, we have changed uh, three times our de de decision in managing the the, the, the clerical planning in the hospital. When the rector come to decision to stop all the act campus activity, uh, we stop the all campus activity and become online uh, learning for the preclinical student. But we worry about the clinical children. And we come to the rector to ask for special consideration for us to give a chance for still in the hospital. Because uh, we are thinking about the importance of real case experiences. And the second one is about the ethical issue, ethical consideration. I worry about the 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 thinking of the student that if you if there is pandemic or epidemic, we have to run away from the hospital. So I keep them in the hospital, but there is many limitation. The limitation is uh, about uh, we remove all the student from the we 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 remove the, all the student from the remote hospital. We remove. We remove all students from remote hospital from countryside, and we pull concentrate in the hospital in the city of Makassar. Too easy to control them, to control them, especially for discipline using the personal protection equipment. And the second uh, is the to reduce their time in the hospital, so they have to leave the hospital area as possible if already their task finished already. And the third one, using discipline, discipline using protection equipment, personal protection equipment. We are running uh, this uh, base, hospital-based clinical uh, education for two weeks during the uh, pandemic of uh, COVID-19 virus. But after the, the second week, we are worried because according to the report that the student doesn't use enough protection equipment. And we read from media. One minute, yeah. What happened? One minute. One minute. One, we read from media that uh, so many contamination or transmission for the student. And the second week, we move to the online. We remove all students from the hospital. And the third, the first of this, the first, uh, the first week of this month, we decide to use this model, clinical craigship during COVID-19 pandemic period. We divided the clerkship learning into virtual clinic, about 50 to 70% of the whole cycle. And they will leave the rest cycle after finish the COVID, about 70 to 50% of the cycle. What we learned, what they were, they were to, they used to learn in the virtual clinic is this one, small group learning, case report, portfolio from uh, department archive from uh, daily practice of the teacher. Referral, journal reading, case-based learning, case reflection, Islamic and ethical follow, scientific seminar, and assessment is pre-test and post-test. After finish the, uh, the, the COVID-19 pandemic, we call again the student to back to the, their uh, department to finish the rest uh, cycle. The oh. learning activity skills, training, hospital rotation, portfolio, 
case restriction, Islamic and ethical value of scientific seminar, and assessment for stealth for remedial ministry X and Kosky. Okay, it is the last the, the last uh, slide. Okay. It is finished. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope it is uh, very good for sharing to all of the participants. Kita ke Tanjung Pura, Dr. Asrodin dan Dr. Ita with you very short, ya. Sorry, kita udah lebih dari setengah jam. Dimarahin saya. Silakan Dr. Ita. Tanjung okay, Pura. thank you. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity, uh, Prof. Eka and the Universitas of Pelita Harapan. Uh, I would like to, uh, first of all, I would like to thank, thank you, say thank you, and I'm very grateful to join this meeting. And then the little information that can we share from our uh, university, from our faculty is, um, since uh, 16th of March, we stop all the flagship, flagship rotation, and the preclinical student, medical student is doing the virtual learning using the uh, many platform, using the WhatsApp group or uh, Google Classroom, Google Meeting, and the Google Zoom uh, and, and the application of Zoom. But uh, until now, we, we have no, uh, we have planned to start using, uh, start the classroom but it's still uh, any uh, still debate between the clinical teacher and then uh, we still wait until uh, they make decision but uh, one uh, one but we already discussed with the university and then we have made decision to free the tuition fee for our medical student that uh, in the clinical rotation so they can free for this semester and then uh, the uh, the student that already pay for this semester they can uh, uh, they can join to the next term without uh, pay to tuition fee maybe that's uh, what we can share uh, and then uh, the second one we also uh, giving them flexibility about the uh, master study uh, what Okay, uh, so the, we we consider to make it more longer for one semester, and then the third one, uh, we already uh, uh, take the uh, Hippocratic oath the the uh, in the thirteenth uh, April, and then uh, for only so so we can make our uh, doctor. Uh, can help the situation right now. Maybe that's what we can share Thank you. Uh, from the University of Tanjung Pura. Thank you, Prof. Eka. Thank you, Dr. Ita, for you really wise to give discount for Sudan. Yeah? I will ask also my boss to give discount. Yeah? So so we go to Yarsi, Yarsi Jakarta, Professor Rika, Yuli Wandari, PhD with us. Prof. Rika, tolong disikatin ya, karena waktunya. <laughs> Sorry ya. Good morning and good evening for everyone. Uh, it's our great pleasure to join this wonderful meeting. So I will share the experience of ERC in adapting our clinical practice to online learning. So please let me introduce you the history of our online learning program. It, is, it was started in 16 March. Uh, when our rector uh, 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 that the academic activity in campus should be cut down. So at that time, it was really confused because as we know, we, we adopt traditional method in teaching our clinical uh, classic students. So suddenly we have to adapt all the curriculum into, into the online learning. So we start having internal discussion and then develop uh, or choose the best way to do online learning for our classes. And then also have discussion with the main, the Comcordic, the coordinator of our main education hospital. And within two weeks, we, we, we can almost have a conclusion 
So in the, in the beginning of April, we start having discussion with other satellite hospital and affiliated hospital. And in the first week of April, we started the online learning. And the online learning still continue until May, and hopefully it will finish in the third week of May, because after that we will have a holiday, it, uh, idol Fitri holiday. And during the online learning, every two weeks, we uh, conduct computer-based tests for all the students. And hopefully, if the pandemic COVID can finish in June, we hopefully we can resend our students for clinical rotation in the hospital. Of course, they still need uh, uh, self-protection equipment, proper self-protection equipment, and we need to adjust the duration of the class sick in the hospital. So as we know, this is some teaching method and assessment. We usually uh, implement this for our clinical partnership uh, students. So during the COVID pandemic era, we need to be carefully select which teaching method and which assessment method that can be adopted into online learning, especially uh, uh, consider the level of competency as uh, written in standard competency doctor Indonesia 2012. So finally, we agree uh, the clinical lecturer in our campus and in the hospital agree to select these uh, six methods to be implemented during the online learning. There are case discussion, journal reading, referat, skill demo, and CBT. So each of them has a portion for the final grade. Like for case discussion, journal reading and referat uh, get 5% of the final grade. And then skill demo is done using the video and the computer-based test get a, a bit bigger portion, about 20%. One minute more. Oh, five minutes more. And we also uh, ask the student to uh, involve in my recon uh, provided by DICT. Uh, for the because of the online learning, then when the when we resend the student to the hospital for the major department that regularly they will take ten weeks for the clinical rotation. Uh, after the online learning, they need to fulfill the remaining eight weeks. And for the minor department, from five weeks in the regular time become four weeks after online learning. And the case presentation is provided by the, the clinician, like uh, showing the, the picture of the case. And for journal reading, the students select the paper to be presented and to get a critical appraisal. And for referral, the, the, the lecturer select uh, the, the title of the case that should be presented by students. The clinical skill demo is done either by the video that is provided by the teacher, the lecturer himself, like in this example, our surgeon uh, create their own video about the suturing. And also we develop our own repository video that can be used for students in pre-medical states, pre-clinical state, and also can be used for our clinical flagship students. And also luckily there are a lot of that is uh, that is available in open source. Like for example, in this in this video, this is a video about physical newborn that is provided by Open Pediatric. It's very useful. And the healthy baby will be flexibly stuck. And the other one, like physical examination for thorax, uh, provided by University of Le Leicester. This one is also I will skip the other example. And the final one, we also conducted CBT in computer based test. We use the CBT in our campus CBT system, but it is connected to internet. And uh, the student will use two different devices laptop and mobile phone. Laptop to connect to Zoom and the device to connect to our CBT system. By having these two devices, so the lecturer can monitor how the student do the CBT test, whether they do it properly or they do it And all students must attend uh, this CBT test. 
I think that's all sought into production about okay. Thank you, Gabrika. So we go to Matara, Lombok Island, most beautiful island. Dr. Samsu Katrian, THT from University Mataram. Please go ahead, Dr. Samsu. Tolong di bertempat ya, Prof. Ya. Kita di ubur ubur. Thank you, Prof. Silakan, Dr. Samsu. So, um, I would like to maybe directly to the slide because the time is very limited. Okay, so I would like to share about the implement, implementation of the online uh, based learning in clinical rotation in public health medicine, Matram University. So I think the problem is similar. Um, the impact is also, I think, uh, almost in uh, other places similar. And uh, um, in our faculty, we divided the clinical rotation to uh, two stages. So the first stage is the online stage. And the second state, we hope that after the uh, normal condition, we can continue the uh, stage normally. So in the first stage, um, we provide about 10 to 30 percent of the uh, clinical rotation in this uh, period. And then uh, after we uh, calculate, the student will be arranged for the, their rotation for about uh, four months. And we hope that in the online stage, maybe we can uh, reach the uh, competency, especially for the cognitive purposes, but also uh, we hope that there is effective and small amount of the psychomotor can be reached. Uh, and we hope uh, after the normal stage, uh, the 70% of the time of the uh, clinical rotation will be conducted. And then we hope that all competency could be uh, uh, achieved. Yeah. So here is the step-by-step -step of our modification uh, in the clinical rotation. So first we uh, uh, coordinate with the learning coordinator in the, uh, each department, and then uh, they identify uh, what is the level competency and the clinical competency that uh, could be reached with the online and then uh, identify the cognitive aspect in the clinical rotation and uh, we can uh, uh, forecast how many weeks uh, we need to uh, finish it. And then uh, we do the modification of uh, activities, especially with the not workplace uh, activities and uh, we arrange the journal reading, clinical tutorial, case report, uh, with the case, with previous case or maybe with the simulation case. And then uh, the uh, head of study program decides what resources we need and what methods we need, uh, such as Zoom, WebEx, Google Classroom, and also um, maybe we give some uh, reference and then we make this uh, schedule. And we coordinate also with the committee for learning coordination in the hospital, and uh, we collect all of the results from the department and then arrange the modification uh, in the first stage and then conducting the briefing for the student and also for the uh, uh, lecturer uh, so the student can follow the program uh, uh, completely. And then the faculty make the uh, uh, letter for the implementation and also for the evaluation. Here is the modification. Maybe in surgery, uh, we conducted three weeks in OBGYN, two weeks, and so on. Here is in the other department. And maybe this is the uh, rot uh, clinical rotation in the beginning and then uh, the modification. Uh, so we conducted only for the four months, but it's depend on the progress of the COVID-19 infection. If it uh, uh, prolongs, so maybe we should uh, re-modification again the, the uh, uh, clinical rotation. Satu minute, ya, Prof. Dr. Amsu. Satu minute. Thank you. So I will uh, show you the uh, some of the implementation in in some department, such as in the surgery department here. There is. Uh, um, briefing and then there is a, a case report uh, with the mini lecture yeah journal reading 
And here in the Department of Dermatology and Venerology, it was uh, running well also. Mm -hmm. And uh, besides with the Zoom meeting, we do also with the uh, WhatsApp. Oh. Okay. And then here in the Department of Pediatric, there are many uh, activities here. There is a, a clinical tutorial with the quiz, yeah. And then journal reading, face presentation, uh, and then the student also uh, have a task to build the video, yeah, for the immunization, and then also for the uh, uh, pediatric social, yeah. Oh. Uh, with the cohort, yeah, and. and I think there are so many uh, sample in the other department. So thank you very much for uh, the time. I'm, thank you, thank uh, you, Dr. Hamsu. It's very you, beautiful, very beautiful. But sorry, your time is limited. So we go to Dano Tobar, Professor Aldi Rambe, neurologist from USU. Are you there? Yes. yes Professor right. Aldi. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Go ahead, Professor Aldi. I'm waiting for the PowerPoint to be shared. Thank you, Prof. Eka, for arranging the, such a beautiful, beautiful meeting like this. Uh, I would like to present the, what we do for clerkship education in USU Medan. This is the rotation in uh, USU. We have two rotation. Uh, the first rotation and the second rotation contain each nine department. Slide, please. Uh, on March 16, slide please. Yeah, on March 16, the counselor decided to pull out the uh, education in USU to distance learning, online learning. So uh, I write a letter to provide the distance learning for two weeks at, for the first period, and we also uh, pull out our uh, students from the hospital for two weeks and uh, switch the methods to online uh, teaching. Slide please. After two weeks, we uh, meet to evaluate and some of the professors uh, were worried about the level of competency that should be reached, cannot be reached with this distance learning. So. Since the condition is getting worse, we stop the clinical rotation for four weeks, and uh, we will uh, provide. Uh, we will provide. We have meeting discussion to provide a better one after that. Right, please. After four weeks, the situation is not getting better. And instead of it getting better, it's getting worse. So we uh, we are worried about the students' length of uh, student. Period. So we decided to restart the distance learning for our COAS, for our uh, clerkship program on uh, 27 of April. Slide, please. When we start restarted the program, we do notice that we have several limitations, like distance learning has no hands-on practice lack of hands-on practice, lack of bedside teaching and OSG activities, costly because the student have to spend more money to buy a uh, phone bill uh, and limited experience as a real doctor. This is our expected limitation. And we, as we, as I think we have the same problem all over Indonesia and in the world also, uh, I asked Professor Eka to share our survey to the students. We did the survey last week. Actually, the survey is for internal usage at first, at the beginning, but I'd like to share the survey to all of you. Slide this. This is our survey. We have 378 respondents uh, who are mostly located in Medan, and they mostly stayed at their own home. Uh, slide this. Slide, please. We asked the, about the, no, the previous slide, please. The previous slide, please. Yes, thank you. 
We ask the students about the types of in internet connection they use, and most of them use mobile uh, mo mobile handphone or mobile phone as a hotspot. And the second most they use internet uh, broadband. Slide, please. This is the problem with them. Uh, we ask the student how, how much how, how, how much bandwidth they use during the uh, distance learning program. And most of them use a quite big uh, quota for this. And uh, they do said that they do inform us they have limitation assessing the internet. 71% said that they have limitation while assessing the internet. Slide. This is the, for the question distance learning of the obstacles. Uh, the students answered that the main problem is the internet connection instability. Almost 90% uh, said that this is the uh, main problem. And then the second problem is blackout uh, and uh, costly, I think. And for the solution, they always, they usually visit their family members or uh, go to public places where can they can provide uh, a better internet connection. Slide, please. So uh, about considering uh, the learning issues, the students, all, the most common use during the distance learning is CASI port, lecture or tutorial and morning report and some other slide. Yeah. And then uh, they almost 90% of students say that the schedule and the topics are clearly shared and the most commonly used platform is Zoom. And some of them also use Skype, Google Meet, or Usu e-learning, right? Uh, according to the lecturer's IT capability, uh, more than half of the students said that their lecturer's IT capability is quite good. It's good enough for the uh, distance learning. And the system is, uh, good enough but only for 50 percent the other 50 percent said they have uh, trouble with, with their they have difficulty with their uh, internet system slide most of the students studied uh, one to three hours uh, online uh, in one day and the average lecture time mostly is uh, around uh, more than one hour in every day so this is the uh, length of study online for each student every day slide and most of the students said the prospect, prospectors, uh, perceptors give them enough time to discuss the uh, lecture and the current learning system is good enough is uh, only 50% said that it's good enough. Yeah. Thank you, Prof. That's uh, our survey conducted last week. I hope uh, it can give uh, you some information from that. Thank you very thank, much. Thank, thank you, Prof. Adi. Very honest evaluation of us. Thank you very, very much. It is beautiful. So, Prof. Udo, Prof. Udo, please ask all the deans, make a criticized letter to Menteri Kominfo Johnny Plate. Why internet in Indonesia is so bad? I'm sorry, I'm not, uh, I'm not criticized, but compare with Singapore, with other, I believe our internet connection is the worst. Sorry, uh, sorry, sorry. Let's all the this criticize them. This is, we need a remote, we need online, we need the best internet system. That's right. Prabudu, nanti kita protest keras ya. Ini bagaimana masa karena internet kita nggak bisa bagus. Kalah sama negara tetangga ya Prabudu ya. Okay, we go ahead to Bandung again. University Christian Maranatha, Dr. Luciana, you Luciana, you there? Good afternoon. Greeting to all of us. Thank you for the opportunity giving to me at this respective forum. I'm very grateful, especially for Professor Eka as initiator on promoting this notification activity. I'm grateful as well for uh, the AP President Professor Budu that has been supporting this activity. I will share uh, the clerkship education in Department of Medicine at Maranatha Christian University since the beginning of work from home 
and education distance learning state by president of our university. Uh, please slide. So the education distance learning was began on March 16, 2020. It is the, for the next day, we conduct our distance learning at our faculty. During this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, it's a difficult period. During this period as well, we have a lot of change in regulation and condition. Therefore, we are required to have a new and innovative technique. For the example, uh, since physical distance, distancing uh, is required, we need IT and online tools. It's required. For the example, uh, since uh, physical distancing is required, we need IT and online tools. It's required a lot of effort and we we are not un, uh, not prepared. However, let us not be stressed and do as much as we can in order to have positive energy. Beginning of uh, EDL, it was uh, 17 March of us. Medical activity was a uh, risk and clarship rotation was stopped. However, EDL still goes on even though uh, not very department can do it well. And also it was not really uh, effective. So we put a lot more effort on preparation to remedy this. The activity can be, can be done is our, uh, our many lectures, CSS, BD. It is all done uh, okay. to online work from home and lecture from home. Thank you, Bulusi. Bulusi, thank you very much. Dr. Mahmoud Kasanawi dari Muhammadiyah Makassar. Okay, we have preclinical and clinical stage in our education, medical education. The preclinical is almost the same. We use online lectures, PBL that can be done online. There's no problems. Problems comes when we have to do exam. You don't have uh, artificial intelligence to watch the students like uh, in Melbourne, but unfortunately we then we have to deploy so many uh, lecturers and uh, administrative uh, staff to to watch the students so we divide the students several students for one uh, staff that's uh, the preclinical stage issues there are many issues in the clinical stage we we have so many challenging issues just like prof sarifudian said safety of the students is one of our concern. That's not only our concern, but that's also concerns of the parents. The parents' concerns is so strong, so great, and they keep on asking us to let the students uh, pull back from the hospital. The hosp they regarded the hospital as a red zone or dangerous area and they don't want to, uh, their, their, um, their children uh, to bring uh, virus to the family or to uh, bring virus home. Yeah. So some department can still run uh, the teaching using online but that's not possible for the whole department. There are several reasons. Some of the doctors or the lecturers are busy in the hospital because of the hospital is so hectic. And some lecturers avoid hospital, but that's okay. If they avoid hospital, then they can work home. But there are many, uh, competencies that cannot be achieved in there. We 
uh, we did give uh, students assignments and then they asked them to make summary. But uh, that's only work for several departments because not always applicable to others. And some idealistic thoughts also arise. This is the time, they said, this is the time that we can teach the students to have empathy, to, to do well, to have a quick response in uh, some cause of disasters like that. However, uh, because the preparation is not there, availability of uh, protective gowns is not uh, as we expected. Protective gowns is very limited. So we, we stop it. We don't want students to get involved too much. Finish, um, that's uh, almost finished. So, in summary, we we do not let the students continue. We pull the students back out. We only give them um, some assign assignments, but after that, uh, we do not continue, and we have decided that we have to extend their, uh, their clerkship period because uh, uh, some of the competence that they haven't achieved. So we, we consider achievement of the competence is more important. Thank you. Yeah, that's all, Profika. Back to you. Very, very beautiful. Last but not least, we go to the most northwest of Indonesia, Bumi Rinchong. We invite Professor Dr. Maimon Sukri from Syakwala. Very Thank good. you very much, Professor Eka. Uh, it's uh, a pleasure, Professor Eka, to arrange this uh, meeting. And thank you for the our dean of Indonesian Faculty of Medicine. In, in which the current happens in Syakwala University, we have the three phase until now, but the first phase of the last is, is in transition. We can start, we start uh, 17 March to 17 April. And the second phase is evaluation of the transition peri period. And the third phase is stabilization, st start from 20, 20 April until now. What we do, in transition phase, what 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 happened? What the problem we got it in transition phase? We know that uh, the background of the pandemic of it is come suddenly, and but we must be handled with quickly. A declarative education system must be changed from the conventional to distance learning. Is different with the tsunami disaster in our region in 16 years ago. Most of the students, most of students, we moved to the other university in Indonesia, like Hasanuddin, Gajah Mada, uh, Indonesia, and North Sumatra University. But it's different in the total uh, disaster. What we, we got in the, what we got the problem in the transition phase is the system was not well organized and the evolution system was not standard standardized. But the evolution phase, 62% uh, of students felt that learning outcome were not achieved. And 60% of students feel they are given to many assessment and lack tutorial. So we go to turn to study some phase now that from April to now, uniform list and learning guiding for clinical program, we call that uh, clinical rotation is divided into cognitive phase and psychomotor phase. The psychomotor phase is carried out after the pandemic is over. Yeah. In clinical rotation, my rotation, conventional rotation is 10 weeks, but the distance learning uh, currently, we cognitive phase six weeks, and physical motor phase for week. 
and will carry out after the pandemic is gone. The minor rotation, confusional rotation is five weeks. In this time learning, we put them three weeks and psychomotor phase is two weeks. Uh, it's the experience of our institution and there is same with not different or really different with the other uh, faculty. Thank you very much, Professor Eka. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. This is very beautiful, very useful, so that we know that some medical schools that still are not doing anything that we expect that we could do, because we do not know, we do not know until when the corona gone, right? So please, my suggestion, do something for our Koas, then anyway, at least they can have like a semi-competence. It's not possible to give a full competence, but at least something to do. Otherwise, our Koas becoming depression and becoming uh, very stressful at house. So we are very happy because, you know, in this meeting, this is very sudden only two days preparation. And with us, we understand that we have a four from five world top class medical school and six from 20 top world class medical school. So we are very proud. So we learn each other and then Indonesia should jump to be also one of the best in the world. So we missing bro, uh, Dr. Sutoya because he has an emergency case, but okay. Last, Dr. Andre will one minute give show you about our case of uh, comprehensive medical last for the closing and thank you very very much I'm sorry if I'm not professional sorry if something not happy but we will repeat again yeah thank you very much Dr. Andre last yes thank you uh, professor Dr. Dean Spice Dean in from US UK and from uh, uh, Singapore and also from Australia and all from Indonesia uh, in closing video, we would like to share uh, our uh, apprenticeship shouldn't do when they were in home. Uh, okay, they were joined. Screen, they were joined to have a multidisciplinary team uh, discussion with our uh, neurosurgeon, pathologist, and screen. also with uh, yeah. pa, the ophthalmologist. Okay, so so uh, the student when they have. When they are at home, they can see what they do, life surgery and others uh, related to what they should do at Kershaw. Maybe that's all. Thank you for your time, energy, uh, for almost uh, three and a half hours. Uh, maybe you can share all the feedback to us so we can improve for the next year. Uh, another Zoom meeting. Thank you. See you all. So again, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much and see you. Hopefully, Corona gone soon. We meet again. Yeah, Miss all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, okay close. Tutup ya. Untuk tulisin berita satu, tutup.